Welcome to Power Code Music. In this presentation, we are going to do an overview of the Mackie Pro FX30 V3 30 channel mixer with USB. Mackie Designs was founded in Woodenville, Washington by Greg Mackie. He designed and manufactured affordable Pro Audio mixers under the Mackie label in his three bedroom condominium in Edmonds, Washington. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do something, right? Now the company's first product release was the LM1602 line mixer, which was priced at around $400 at that time. When I hear the term Mackie mixer, from my perspective, one of the first things I think of is quality and then good sound. Now if you are looking for a professional USB mixer with effects and your budget is tight, then the Mackie Pro FX V3 product line may be something that's a good choice for you to check out. Pro FX V3 models are designed for studio recording, stage performances, DJs live streaming, content creation, and more. There are currently six different models available. What I'm gonna do is give you the price for each model on the list, and this is gonna be the new retail price. Now these models include the Pro FX6 V3, which is a six channel mixer. It is $189. The next is the Pro FX 10 V3. It's a 10 channel mixer. It's $269. Then we have the Pro FX 12 V3, which is a 12 channel mixer. It goes for $359. Then we have the Pro FX 16 V3, which is a 16 channel mixer, which retails for $549. Then we have the Pro FX 22 V3, which is a 22 channel mixer. It is $779. And then finally, we have the Pro FX30 V3 30 channel mixer, which retails for $999 and is the primary focus of this overview. Mackie designed this model series to include a 2x4 192KHZ USB recording uh, feature, and it includes internal effects along with the famous Onyx preamps. The company also includes both Pro Tools First and Waveform OEM recording software packages with each model. In this presentation, we're going to look at the Mackie Pro FX30 V3 30 channel mixers, features, technical specifications, channel strip and connections, and back panel connections. We'll also view some example connection diagrams for both live and studio configurations. We'll start with the Mackie Pro FX30 V3's features. This is a 30 channel USB mixer with 25 Onyx preamps. These are really good preamps. It has a three band EQ along with a 48 volt phantom power supply on the unit. USB is provided for playback and recording, and there's a dual stereo USB return for additional routing flexibility. It has direct monitoring for overdub sessions and 24 effects, along with built-in compression. It has switchable Hi-Z inputs for basses and guitars, and an aux monitor with dedicated per channel send control. The unit has dual stereo subgroup output bus with per channel assignment, and a headphone output. It also has dedicated room, or should I say control room output with level control, and a foot switch input for FX mute. Now, let's check out the Mackie Pro FX30 V3's technical specifications. The unit is an analog mixer with USB interface. Again, this is how Mackie lists it. It's not a digital mixer, it's an analog mixer. It consists of 30 channels, which are 22 model and four stereo. The PC connection is via USB and the resolution is 24 bit at 192 kilohertz. The unit has 30 60 millimeter faders. And when it comes to mic preamps, there's two XLR quarter inch combo uh, inputs along with 23 XLR mic inputs. When it comes to line inputs, there are 20 quarter inch six quarter inch, which are three stereo, and one eighth inch stereo. For the outputs, there are two XLR, two quarter inch, uh, left, right, and two quarter inch control room. 
For other outputs, um, there are four quarter inch subgroup outs. For uh, aux sends, there's one effect send post and two monitor sends that are pre and one monitor send that's pre post. Send and return in and outs, we have one quarter inch FX send and three quarter inch monitor sends. Bus groups, we have two subgroups and the unit also has phantom power. When we look at the inserts, we have 22 quarter inch channel inserts. We have one headphone uh, insert and a USB type B insert as well. The unit also has a, a quarter inch foot switch uh, insert and it has a three band EQ that is on all channels. Signal processing includes 16 channel compressors and the effects are managed by the gig FX engine which includes reverb, chorus, and more. The power source is a standard IEC AC cable, and below that we have the unit's height, width, depth, and weight. We'll move on to the Mackie Pro FX 30 V3's channel strip and connections. Starting at the top of the strip, we have the XLR and quarter inch combo inputs. Input channels 1 and 2 on all Pro FX V3 models may accept a balanced mic or line level signal using an XLR connector. Both channels may also accept a quarter inch line level signals um, that are driven by balanced and unbalanced sources. With this, both channels can also um, handle high Z sources such as basses and guitars, that is electric basses and guitars, via the quarter inch input without the need for a separate DI box. Moving across the mixer, we have our mic ends. This is a female XLR connector that accepts a balanced mic or line level input from almost any type of source. Next we have the line high Z switch. To connect a guitar, electric guitar that is, directly to the mixer without using a DI box, you have to press the switch first and then connect the output from the guitar to the channel's quarter inch TRS input. The input impedance is then optimized uh, in this way uh, for direct connection and better fidelity. In the out position, the channel's quarter inch TRS input becomes a line input just like the other mono line inputs. Now to use guitars or other instruments on other channels, you're going to need to use an external DI box first. Without the DI box, or if this switch is not pressed in, guitars could sound muddy or dull. Moving back across the board, we have our line ends. Now this quarter inch jack shares circuitry, but not the phantom power, keep that in mind, no phantom power with the mic preamps. And it can be driven by uh, unbalanced or balanced sources at just about any level. Now you can also use these inputs for virtually any other signal that you plug into the board. Moving back across the board, um, we have our stereo line inputs. Um, the stereo line inputs are designed for quarter inch TRS balance or TRS, or should I say TS quarter inch unbalanced signals. They accept any line level signal just about uh, from a, a CD player, MP3 player, or uh, other effects device. Now if you're connecting a mono source, use the left mono input and the mono signals will appear on both sides of the main mix. Moving back across uh, the mixer a little bit, we have the eighth inch stereo input. This stereo input accepts a eighth inch line level signal from a phone or mp3 player or other source. Next we have a uh, insert jack and this is the unbalanced quarter inch jacks uh, that are used for connecting uh, serial effects devices such as uh, the easers, equalizers, compressors, etc. The insert point here is after the gain control and low cut filter but before the channel's EQ and level. After that we have our low cut switches. All channels with a mic input have a low cut switch. They are often referred to as a high pass filter. Now this cuts bass frequencies below 100 Hz at a rate of 18 decibels per octave. Next we have our gain knobs and level set LEDs. These uh, gain knobs in, um, in conjunction along with I should say the LED, uh, level set LEDs adjust the input 
sensitivity of the mic and line level inputs. This allows signals uh, from the real world to be adjusted or processed uh, through each channel at an optimal internal operating level. Next, uh, or should I say with this, the gain control of the uh, eighth inch stereo input channel has 20 decibels of gain and 20 decibels of attenuation. For any hybrid channels, that is mic input and stereo line input channels, the gain control just affects the microphone input. Moving across the mixer, we have our USB 3 and 4 uh, switch. This switch overrides the eighth inch input and allows for USB return, that is stereo playback from the USB return. Moving back across the mixer, we have our compressor knobs. Of course, these we know these are useful for compressing vocals and drums. Uh, for example, you might consider connecting your vocal and drum mics to these channels rather than one of the other channels. When the incoming signal exceeds the threshold level that's set by this knob, the signal level is automatically compressed. This reduces the dynamic range and reduces the chance of distortion due to overloading when the uh, signal is input. Now, just in case you don't know, the dynamic range is the difference in the level between the quietest, quietest and loudest parts of a song. What a compressor does is it squeezes the dynamic range, resulting in an overall steadier, more constant volume level, more consistent volume level, and it helps the sources such as, you know, a vocal or drums sit better in the mix, and it's very useful for live sound to keep everything more consistent. Next, we have our high EQ knobs. The high EQ provides up to 15 decibels of boost or cut above 12 kilohertz. And it is also uh, flat, I should say no boost or cut, at the detent. Next, we have the mid EQ knobs and the frequency knobs. This mixer um, includes a semi-paramic mid-sweep EQ. The gain, which is up to 15 decibels of boost per cut, is set by way of the mid EQ and then aimed at, spe at a specific frequency from 100 hertz to 8 kilohertz by way of the frequency control. Next, moving across the mixer, um, we have a mid EQ knob. This is short for mid range. This knob provides up to 15 decibels of boost or cut, that is when it's centered at 2.5 kilohertz. Also flat, it's also flat at the center detent. Next, moving back across the board, we have our low EQ knobs. The low EQ provides up to 15 decibels of boost or cut below 80 hertz. The circuit is, a, is also flat at the center detent position. Next, we have our aux mon knobs. These knobs tap a portion of each channel signal to set up a nicer monitor mix that are, that mix that's are feeding these stage monitors and that are independent of the main mix. You adjust these controls on each channel until the band's happy with the monitor mix. The controls are off when fully turned down and deliver unity gain at the center detent, that is center position, and can provide up to 10 decibels of gain when turned uh, all the way up. The pan mute and channel faders do not affect the monitor output, but the other channel controls will. That is, the aux monitor is pre-fader, so keep that in mind. Next we have the pre-fader pre switches. Aux sends 1 and 2 are always pre-fader. They're designed for stage and monitor applications. Aux send 3 may be set to pre or post-fader, so they may be used for monitors or effects. Next, we have the aux FX knobs. These knobs tap a portion of each channel signal to set up a FX mix feeding the internal FX processor and to feed the external processors via the FXN. The controls are off when fully turned down and deliver unity gain at the center detent and provide up to 10 decibels of gain when it's, when it's turned all the way up. The mute channel fader the mute, or should I say channel fader and other channel controls affect the FX output, but pan does not. The aux FX is post fader. 
Moving on, we look at the pan knobs. These controls allow you to adjust how much the channel signal is sent to the left versus the right outputs, right? It's pretty obvious. Now, the pan control employs a design on the mixer called constant loudness. If you have a channel pan hard left or right and then pan it to center, the signal is attenuated about three decibels to maintain the same apparent loudness. Otherwise, it would make a sound appear much more louder when panned uh, center. Next, we have the mute switches. Pretty uh, self-descriptive. Uh, mute switches do just what they sound like they do. They turn off the signal by routing it into nowhere. Engaging the signal's mute provides the same results as turning the fader all the way down. Next, we have the assign switches. Alongside each channel fader are buttons referred to as channel assignment switches. When you use these with the channel's pan knob, they are used to, term, to determine the destination of the channel signal. With the pan knob at the center detent, the left and right sides receive equal signal levels. So in the main mix, the left, right, and this, you know, sub one and two and sub and three, um, sub, uh, should I say three and four, um, that's what it, it affects. To feed only one side or the other, turn the pan knob accordingly, right? Pretty straightforward stuff. Next, we have the channel faders. Now, this is the last control in the channel signal path, and it adjusts the level of each channel onto the main mix. The U, the U mark, indicates unity gain, meaning no increase or decrease of signal level. All the way up provides an additional 10 decibels should you need to boost the section of the song. If you want to find the o that the overall level is too quiet or too loud, uh, with the level near unity, check the gain control uh, that check the gain control that it is set correctly. And then finally, we have the um, uh, at the bottom, the last button there is the PFL solo switches. When a channel solo switch is, is pressed, any existing selection is replaced by the solo signal. Now, this is appearing at the control room outputs. Uh, the phones and at the left meter. The audible solo levels are then controlled by the CR and phone knobs. The solo levels appearing on the meters are not controlled by the CR and the phone's knobs. So keep that in mind. Uh, in case you don't know, PFL means pre-fader listen, that is post EQ. With the PFL solo switch engaged, solo will not be affected by a channel's mute switch position. Now, we'll take a look at the Mackie Pro FX30 V3's back panel connections. On the back of the unit, the first component we have is the power connection. Then we have your power switch, which is followed by the USB input and output. Last but not least are our main outputs. Now these provide a line level signal that represent the end of the mixer chain. This is where the fully mixed stereo signal enters our world. You connect these to the left and right inputs of your main power amplifiers, serial effects processors, or powered speakers. The male XLR connectors provide a balanced line level signal and are wired according to the standards specified by the Audio Engineering Society. On screen now is a connection diagram example for a live sound system setup. You take a second to check that out. Moving on, on your screen now is a connection diagram example for a recording studio setup. Well friends, that's a wrap. If you like this presentation, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about this content. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and TikTok. While you're here, also check out some of the other videos and the playlist because they're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you soon.